Thank you everyone for joining me in this session. Welcome to Imaging and Study. Today we are going to see some abdominal cases. In the next session, we will go with the obstetric one. So without any further delay, let's start. Let's start with the first case. A 16 years old male patient came with fever for four days. It was during the dengue fever endemic season in Dhaka in 2019. The patient had the NS1 antigen test positive. Platelet count was decreasing gradually. Here you can see the gallbladder wall is thickened and edematous. The wall thickness was about 4.7 mm. The normal wall thickness we know is less than or up to 3 mm. The pancreas looks normal and this is another wall thickness I have measured from different location which is 5 mm. This is another picture of the gallbladder of this patient and the gallbladder wall looks edematous and uh, you can see some collection adjacent to the gallbladder. This is the cross section of the kidney just beside the liver and the echogenicity of the kidney is quite increased. Collection was seen at the Morrison's pouch in between the lower pole of the kidney and, and the liver, which means uh, this is a peritoneal collection or ascites. We have seen already ascites and gallbladder wall thickening. Kidney and liver are normal in size for this patient. The echogenicity of right kidney looks a little increased if you compare with the adjacent liver. The liver is quite normal here. As it is a patient of dengue fever, we need to look very carefully. So magnify the image and you can see there is a tiny bit of collection at the pleural space. This is the upper pole of the right kidney. This is the liver, this is the diaphragm and you can see a small amount of collection that is pleural effusion. So here is the pleural effusion. You can see some collection above the diaphragm. Now come to the spleen. Spleen looks quite normal and we have measured the spleen. It was 10.4 cm in length approximately, which is quite normal. But as we have compared the body status of the patient, 10.4 cm looks quite prominent to us. If you look at the left kidney, it looks normal in size, but the echogenicity is quite increased if you compare it with the adjacent spleen. So here is the spleen and if you look carefully at the upper pole, you may see a small amount of collection noted at the left pleural cavity, indicating left-sided pleural effusion. So here is another picture showing very small amount of left-sided pleural effusion which you may miss if you not look carefully. Again the picture of the left-sided pleural effusion, very small amount, easily missed. If you don't know the patient's history of dengue fever, you may miss it and usually we don't actually look at that area very carefully. The urinary bladder looks normal and the prostate as it is a male patient looks also normal. So this is the picture of the prostate in longitudinal and transverse section and the adjacent area looks quite normal. But we want to focus more on the iliac fossa because we have seen some collection at the Morrison's pouch. At the right iliac fossa, you can see the bowel loops are moving due to peristaltic movement and you can see an anechoic area outside the intestinal loop indicating small amount of ascites. This is a very common dependent site where we see the ascites at the right or left iliac fossa. This is the picture of the ascites. Just make a summary of the features you have seen. We have seen thickened edematous gallbladder wall. Spleen looks prominent for this patient as it's a 16 years old and the body status is not so high. So we want to report it as a prominent spleen. Bilateral renal parenchymal echogenicity look increased and mild peritoneal collection that is ascites was present. And uh, we have seen bilateral trace pleural effusion.
Now take on masses for this case. If you see gallbladder wall thickening, ascites, and pleural effusion in a patient with a dengue fever, you need careful observation of this patient. We usually want to keep this patient in a center with intensive care unit facility because this patient may deteriorate any time due to hemorrhagic appearance or due to very poor platelet count. So make sure you know that you have to search these features to reduce the mortality in dengue fever cases. Let's start the case number two. A Middle East male patient came to the emergency department with severe right abdominal pain and vomiting. Patient had both Murphy's and McBurney signs positive. Here you can see the gallbladder of this patient and the wall appears thickened and edematous. The lumen doesn't look distended. The wall thickness is around 5 mm and with color Doppler ultrasound you can see a good amount of flow supplying the gallbladder wall. If you look at the liver carefully you can see a small hyper echogenic lesion at the hepatic parenchyma. On color Doppler this lesion is not disturbing adjacent vasculature indicating the possibility of malignancy is quite low. This tiny structure getting supply from the adjacent blood vessel is possibly the hemangioma. So this is the picture of the gallbladder on the left side with the thickened edematous wall and on the right side you can see the hyper echogenic hemangioma. Now as we have seen the gallbladder wall was thickened and the vascularity was increased with the hyperemia of the wall. We want to see the common bile duct in this patient to exclude any obstruction. There was no obstructive features, so this was a case of acalculus cholecystitis. In favor of cholecystitis, we have seen some pericholecystic collection as any quick area adjacent to the gallbladder. So this is the small amount of collection noted adjacent to the gallbladder fossa, that is pericholecystic collection. Now, the bigger diagnosis will confuse you sometime. We have already diagnosed this patient with these features as acute cholecystitis. But we have searched this patient with a high frequency linear transducer, and the right iliac fossa shows this appearance. You can see a tubular non compressible structure at the right iliac fossa with high frequency linear transducer, and surrounding fatty tissue appears thick. This is also a case of acute appendicitis diameter of appendix was around 12 millimeter and the gut signature was present. So in summary we can say there is thickened edematous gallbladder wall with hypermia and pericholecystic collection indicating acute cholecystitis. We have seen tiny echogenic hepatic space occupying lesion that was hemangioma possibly. We have seen blind ended non-compressible tubular structure of intestinal origin at right iliac fossa that indicates acute appendicitis. Now the take home masses. One major diagnosis may confuse you with another diagnosis, so be careful about that. Abdominal inflammatory conditions may affect multiple organs. So if you see pancreatitis, cholecystitis, you should search for other abnormalities like inflammation of the appendix, inflammation of the adjacent gut, some lymphadenopathies, anything else. For hepatic hemangioma, always remember that if you can't make it something else in the liver, then make it a hemangioma. If you have seen a hyperechogenic lesion in the liver, don't say it hemangioma firstly. You try to search for any metastatic deposit, any hepatocellular carcinoma or anything else. If you can't do that thing, you can't see the features of those lesions, then you make it as a hemangioma. Come to the case number three. This will be a quite easy case because we have gone through some toxic ones before. A Middle East female patient came with abdominal pain and fever. Patient was admitted to hospital and there was history of getting broad spectrum antibiotic. Here is the ultrasound of the gallbladder. Now you can see an irregular mass like area within the gallbladder lumen, which is hypoechogenic and also some echogenic foci noted within that. This may look like a gallbladder mass in first impression, but you can see during scanning the shape of the structure is getting changed. If you look carefully, you can see that the structure is not looking quite same as it was when I have started the video. The echogenic foci within this lesion are not casting any posterior acoustic shadow. 
This hypoecogenic area with internal ecogenic foci are diagnosed as organized biliary slas. In summary, we can see a hypoechoic organized slas within the gallbladder lumen that changes shape with posture changing. Ecogenic foci within the slas without postraacoustic shadows need further evaluation on follow up scan to exclude their transformation into stone. The gallbladder wall looks normal, which excludes cholecystitis. Now, the take home message for this case. Patient with prolonged fasting, broad spectrum antibiotics, and pregnancy. In these three cases, it's common to have gallbladder slas. Be careful about diagnosing cholelithiasis in these patients. You may overdiagnose this case. How can you differentiate? Stone won't change its shape, whereas slas will. Remember that acoustic shadow behind the slas will always try to make you full. So be clever. Case 4. 8 years old male patient came with severe cramping abdominal pain for one day. Here you can see the high frequency linear scan of the intestinal loops. You can see some tubular ecogenic motile structures noted within the gut lumen. This spaghetti or chowmin like structures are nothing but warm, that is Ascaris lumbricoides. I hope you can see the movement. That's so creepy, I think. As they were moving, my patient was shouting with pain. I've shown these movements to the patient's father. He was excited to see these worms. This age with a patient from endemic zone should be evaluated to see the worm within the intestine. Here are the worms within the intestinal lumen. They may occlude the lumen. If they occlude the lumen, then the patient will come with other features of intestinal obstruction. So in summary, we can say multiple ecogenic tubular motile structures are noted within the intestinal lumen, suggesting intestinal ascaricis. The rest of the abdominal organs were normal. Now the take-home message for this case. In children with abdominal pain and normal routine ultrasound scan, always try to see the intestine with high-frequency linear transducer to exclude worms, especially if the patient is from an endemic zone or if there is any history of walking barefoot. That is quite common for this age. Case 5. This will be the last case of this session. 40 years old male patient who was husband of a hospital staff, possibly nurse, got referred to our department with severe right hypochondriac pain, vomiting and fever for around one week. The blood pictures as well as multiple ultrasonic scans done at some rural centers show no definite abnormality. So our rural doctors were confused about this case and they have referred this case to our hospital for better management. Patient's pain was not getting improved with time or drugs. And then let's see the ultrasound image. You can see tiny hyperecogenic foci at the segment 7 of the liver indicating hepatic calcification. That may confuse you, but you can also see there is another hyperecogenic linear lesion here. Now we want to focus on that part. Here is another picture, and you can see a hyperecogenic lesion here. It's adjacent to the left portal vein. Another picture, the gallbladder shows a luminal slas. We also can see the glimpse of hyperecogenic structure adjacent to the gallbladder. We can see that hyperecogenic structure here. Is that a hemangioma? It should not be because a hemangioma should not be linear. How can you evaluate this patient? Just magnify the image, focus on that part. Focusing on that part with a magnified view, you can see there is a linear non-motile hyperechogenic tubular structure just at the level of left hepatic duct. This is the left branch of portal vein and left hepatic duct lie at that part. 
rotating the prop 90 degree you can see the cross-sectional view of that hyper echogenic structure and you can also see the surrounding area looks hypo echogenic is that a halo sign or something else now again the linear tubular structure and surrounding area looks a little hypoechogenic. So in conclusion this hyperechogenic linear tubular structure is warm that is Ascaris lumbricoides within the left hepatic duct and the surrounding hypoechogenic area is the inflammatory wall thickening of the duct. So you can focus again and magnify the image and you can see this is the warm with surrounding hypoechogenic inflammatory ductal changes. So this is the hyperechogenic linear tubular structure with hypoechogenic surrounding wall thickening indicating biliary ascariasis. So these are the pictures of this biliary ascaresis with surrounding inflammatory change. I don't want to end this case with these pictures only. I want to show you the high frequency view of this structure. So this is the high frequency linear transducer view and you can see the worm with surrounding hypoechogenic wall thickening in this view. So you can see the worm with surrounding hypoechogenic wall thickening. If you want to end this case with biliary ascaresis only, the diagnosis will be incomplete. Now, the question is that how this worm came here? This worm was not born within this hepatic duct. It came from intestine. So you can't complete this examination without checking the intestine of this patient with high frequency linear transducer. So when we check the intestine, we have seen some linear tubular motile structures noted within the intestinal lumen indicating intestinal ascariasis. So this part you may miss, so be careful about that. So here are the pictures of intestinal ascariasis, like the case we have seen just before. So in conclusion, let's summarize the case. Echogenic tubular non-motile structure was noted within the left hepatic duct with surrounding hypoechogenic ductal wall thickening, suggesting inflammatory change. The gallbladder shows hypoechoic slas within it. Echogenic foci in the hepatic segment 7 was hepatic calcification, which may first confuse you because you have got a diagnosis, then you will stop looking at other ones. Multiple echogenic tubular motile structures were noted within the intestinal lumen suggesting intestinal ascariasis. Okay, so last take home message, if you get worms in the biliary system, then search them in intestine and obviously vice versa. Feel free to subscribe this channel if you want more videos like this case discussion session. Try to on your notification for this channel. If I post any other videos, then you will get notification from YouTube, not from me. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one. Have a nice day.